Greetings gamers, and welcome to Sir George's Games. Today I'm showcasing a new team that I created that has Admiral Akbar as lead, Commander Luke Skywalker, Grand Admiral Thrawn, BB-8, and Asajj Ventress. With this team, you can do 22 million, 25 million, and upwards of 33 million damage in one run! Today, I'm going to show you exactly how. It is very fun having Asajj do over 90,000 damage on her basics in Phase 3, and over 200,000 damage on her basic in Phase 4. Let's talk about time investment though. Is this going to take me forever? You will not just be soloing Phase 3, not just soloing Phase 4, but 30% or more of Phase 2 all the way through to the end, and all in under one hour. Let's talk about the needed Zetas. Only two Zetas are needed, and the first is Asajj's Unique. Having this sated will increase her survivability because of the health gain she will get from every unit death, and also she'll be doing 50% more damage from the greater offense gain. CLS needs the It Binds All Things Zeta, because this will be constantly giving your team turn meter throughout the match from his applying debuffs. The necessary Omegas are Admiral Akbar's Tactical Genius, all of CLS's attacks that do not use an Zeta, and BB-8's Illuminated Destiny, and both of Thrawn's specials. Now let's discuss how to actually play with the team, and how to achieve this score and make this team work. Admiral Akbar is going to be your leader, with his leadership causing every non-attacking ability that an ally uses will call a random rebel ally to assist. That means it will either call Commander Luke, who will remove 30% turn meter, or it will call Admiral Akbar, who will most of the time gain turn meter on his basic, which will allow him to go using one of his specials to call Commander Luke to assist with his basic. Having Luke on the team and called to assist is a very big deal because he will be frequently reducing the turn meter of the B2 in Phase 3, as well as constantly granting turn leader to his teammates. The It Binds All Things Zeta allows that every time he applies a debuff, which his basic and special both may apply to, he will grant his allies 5% turn meter for each, meaning the potential to, on every attack, give each ally 10% turn meter. This will exponentially increase the number of turns you are able to go. In addition to his usefulness for turn meter control, he will be constantly attacking, constantly going, so he will be your main damage dealer right behind the Saj. BB-8's usefulness comes in that he always is able to do a special on his turn that does not attack, so he is always able to call a rebel ally to assist. He also gives his secret intel buff to each ally, which gives potency, which is very useful for Commander Luke and Asajj when attacking side droids. But most importantly is his illuminated destiny attack, which will give all allies 80% turn meter and give them offense up, critical damage up, critical chance up, the list goes on and on. Asajj is the unique flavor and fun of the team, who with every unit death will be gaining 15% critical chance, 15% offense, and 5% health. Meaning as the battle goes on, she will get stronger and stronger, and it will she will deal more damage, and the battle will go quicker and quicker. Thrawn's purpose on the team is for turn meter reduction of the B2 in Phase 3, as well as slowing him down and slowing down the tank in Phases 2 and 4, preventing counters from the B2 in Phase 3, and his very useful protection regeneration that he can apply to allies in need, which will frequently happen to Admiral Akbar and BB-8. Now, take a look with me here at the team. Seven characters have died so far as we've started Phase 3, and Asajj, with BB-8's very useful buffs, 
is already dealing 49,000 on her basic against the B2. That is more than Commander Luke's special, which does 40,000. Both characters are modded exactly the same, and so it's very easy to see how after just one wave of side droids is killed, Asajj is more powerful on her basic than Luke is with his special. Now here at the beginning, you can take it slow, get your rhythm, and focus on killing the side droids first. As you may already know, it can be very dangerous having them alive and giving the main B2 turn meter and giving him turns to get closer to enrage. With this team, once you get the side droids killed though, it is very easy to manage the B2's turn meter. Thankfully, the further you get into battle, the easier it is to kill the side droids, meaning the quicker you can get it back down to just the B2. You can see here that for 23% of the battle, I just focused on the B2, played it safe, and could have kept going if I had chosen to. So you can easily make it through to the end of phase three with say 10 turns left till enrage. But if you choose to risk it more and allow the B2 to take some turns so that more side droids can come up, then you can achieve soloing the phase quicker because the saws will be stronger and dealing more damage at a faster rate. Now that we have more side droids up, what you're going to want to do is pick one to get down to low health. Keep them alive, however, so that Asajj can use her AoE, which will kill that low health droid, reset her cooldowns, and give her 35% turn meter. If any other droids die, that's another 35% turn meter. So watch here. Boom! 105% turn meter, cooldowns reset, and again, boom! The other droids killed, 105% turn meter, cooldowns reset. After just two waves of side droids, as long as you have BB-8's buffs up on Asajj, you'll never have to worry about them again. She'll be able to wipe them out with one AoE. That is the main strategy for Asajj, is to just use her AoE to kill side droids and her basic for damage. And boy does she deal damage. We just saw her do 65,000. Before these, this last wave of six side droids were killed, she was dealing just under 50,000 with her basic. So that's a 15,000 increase in her basic damage from six unit deaths. Now let's talk about Fracture. Here Thrawn is Fracturing, and we're going to want to keep that Fracture up as much as we can. So in the meantime, BB-8 and everybody's going to use all their specials as frequently as possible to build up his Illuminated Destiny. After coming out of Fracture, Thrawn is going to use his basic, and BB-8 will have a good chunk of turn meter. I've kept track of the cooldown for Illuminated Destiny, so that after Thrawn gets out of Fracture, BB-8's next turn, he can use it to give all allies 80% turn meter. Thrawn will get, then go from zero turn meter after using his basic to having full turn meter as well as an ally whom he can swap turn meter with to have full turn meter again. After those two turns that he takes one after another, he is now ready to use his fracture again immediately on the enemy. This is what I call the perma fracture technique that you will want to continue going the entire battle. This is the dynamic that you want to have occurring between Thrawn and BB-8 as much as possible. What this means for effectively using his Fracture is that you will want to wait after coming out of Fracture to use his turn meter swap protection gain and instead use his basic. Otherwise, when BB-8 uses his Illuminated Destiny, there are times that Thrawn will already have high turn meter, have to use his basic then, go back to zero turn meter, and wait for it to fill back up to use Fracture again. You may have noticed now in the battle that Admiral Akbar has very low health. This is why when using Thrawn's 
turn meter swap and protection regeneration, you will want to use it most often on Admiral Akbar and at times on BB-8 since he will also happen to have low protection. In addition to that, do not use Thrawn's Fracture whenever Admiral Akbar has used his special tactical genius because then Thrawn will take an immediate turn and his Fracture will have gone to waste. Next, let's discuss some of the dangers that you need to be aware of and take caution with during your run. The first of which and most likely to happen is for either Admiral Akbar or BB-8 to die. And this is because they have zero health steal, so once their health bar goes down, that's it. Admiral Akbar cannot regenerate his protection either, and while BB-8 can with Illuminated Destiny, that will not be enough to keep it high enough that if a blast attacks him, it will not attack his health as well. In this run, I tried to get away with Admiral Akbar only having 25,000 protection, and as you can see, that was not enough. He has just died, and there's no way to bring him back. If Admiral Akbar dies, though, don't fear, because he's not entirely needed. It will just mean it will take you longer to complete it, but you will still be able to finish Phase 3 and Phase 4 with this team. The downside of losing him is that Illuminated Destiny will take longer, since its cooldown is... Part of the ability is that it's the number of allies that currently have the secret intel buff. And you will also lose his specials, reliably calling Commander Luke to assist. The other danger is Asajj being buffless. Since she is mostly using her basic, there will be times that she loses the secret intel buff as well as the illuminated destiny buffs and is left buffless and vulnerable to the cannon blast in phase 3 and phase 4. The solutions to these problems will be to use Thrawn's special that swaps turn meter on Admiral Akbar first and then BB-8 if necessary. To prevent Asajj from being buffless, use one of her specials when you see the blast turn meter getting very high. She has two of them and if need be, use the one that does nothing. And the other way to protect your Admiral Akbar and BB-8 is to make sure that the mods give them lots of protection. That would be most important when modding them. My tests have shown that 30,000 protection on each is about the right number. And that's pretty much it for the strategy in Phase 3. Have Commander Luke and Admiral Akbar just use their specials whenever they can. Use Thrawn's Fracture and that trick with BB-8 to constantly do it and have him give protection to Akbar and BB-8 when necessary. Asajj will just do her basic and AoE to kill side droids and side turrets and be sure to make sure she has a buff whenever the cannon's about to blast. Phase 3 can go by a lot quicker. You can see that I'm at 8 turns. If I let the B2 have more turns and to bring more side droids up, there will be more droids to kill at 5 turns to enrage, and then more at 2 turns to enrage. And if you're willing to risk it, you can let the enrage timer get down that low so that you can deal more damage with Asajj and go by a lot quicker. Once we get into Phase 4, it's the same drill with the same strategy and the same dangers to look out for. The only difference is you will want to take care of the side B2s first whenever they're alive because you do not want them doing their AoE to wipe the crucial buffs from Illuminated Destiny. Now everything resets when a new encounter occurs, so that means Asajj is back to her original damage. Do not be discouraged though, for this is the phase with the most potential damage for Asajj, and the most gratification from using this team. Asajj just used her AoE for only 19,000 damage. But here, before the next topple, Asajj will do 30,000, 35,000, 
42,000. And finally, 50,000 after five topples. At this point, whenever the new turrets and B2s come up, you can just use Asajj's AoE with BB-8's buffs and she will immediately be able to wipe them all out. As we wrap things up, let's talk about mods. Now the great part is, you do not have to have insane mods, and I do not have insane mods. My tunes do not have incredible speed, and they do not have incredible offense. But it does help to have good mods, because they will just make things go faster. The mod sets I would recommend is definitely crit damage on Asajj and Commander Luke, and for their triangles be sure to get crit damage. For the remaining two slots, doesn't really matter. I think health helps the most, especially for Asajj since that will build up over time. Crit chance is pointless on Asajj since after just a few deaths she'll be at 100% crit chance. And the same for Commander Luke since when he's in offensive mode he gets plus 50 so he's around the 90 to 100 range and it's unnecessary at that point too. And for the other three tunes, they're mostly support and the more they can go, the faster they can get Illuminated Destiny, the faster they can Fracture, the faster they can use specials to call Commander Luke to attack, which would give the entire team turn meter. So just put as much speed on them as you can and make sure you load up Admiral Akbar and BB-8 with protection. I'll show you the mods that I used. As you see, I did a crit damage set. I've only got 78 speed on Asajj. And I was able to boost her damage by almost 20% with a couple secondaries, but not too much. I The best cross I have is a potency one, and that would probably up my damage if I swapped it to an offense, but I don't have the mods for it. The speed secondary on my mods averages to be around 8, so these should be moderately attainable by most players. My commander Luke only has 77 speed. I did use a crit chance set on Luke just because that's the only one that I have a speed secondary on a crit damage triangle. For each of my characters I did put a speed arrow on them. Thrawn is my fastest with 104 speed. BB-8 only has 91 speed, so only a 247. And his main purpose is to use his special. If I could get him faster, I would. But these are the best mods I have right now. And you'll notice I put three protection mods on him for the triangle, circle, and cross. And I did the same for Akbar, who only has 78 speed. And nothing else memorable because his purpose is only to use specials and his leadership. And that's all you need to know for this strategy. Once you get into phase 4, things get real easy, and it's just use Asajj's AoE and attack the main tank. I have actually been able to hit auto in phase 4, but still target the side B2s and the turrets first, because for some reason Asajj will not want to use her AoE, even though she can instantly kill all the enemies. I think it has to do with her only using her AoE on auto when an enemy is in the red. But with Admiral Akbar alive in phase 4, very easy and essentially on auto. I'd like to thank Nuke and Nick McMull for their help on making a video and tips. And keep an eye out for McMull's channel because he will run, be making his own video on this team as well as the variant with Han Solo in place of Asajj. I want to thank my guild family of the Republic and Magor from our guild and his working with me as I took the time out to test this team. I hope this video helps and I hope you guys enjoy it. Please be sure to like and subscribe as I will be making more videos in the future on how to play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Until next time gamers.